Welcome back to another episode of Info Exchange's Conversations with the CIO. Um, so we're just going to dive right into it, Under, right? Info Exchange has a solid history, right, of implementing, you know, modern data center solutions for, uh, you know, private sector, public sector, right? I want to dive into that, uh, you know, a, a lot of it in this mm-hmm. episode, right? Um, we like to push hyperconverged infrastructure, mm-hmm. right? HCI, right? For those of our listeners and viewers who still don't know, may not know what that is, mm-hmm. right? Because we do have some who, who do, yeah. but for those who don't, right? Tell me, what is hyperconverged infrastructure? Um, I just dive into the benefits of utilizing hyperconverged infrastructure over a more traditional you know, approach to your data operations. Okay, so, so let us first describe just what traditionally is mm-hmm. and then what hyperconverged infrastructure is about. Right. Um, traditionally, you would buy a set of servers mm-hmm. and you'd either operate them as physical standalone servers. Right. Um, and that is one model mm-hmm. in which you go to some customers and they say, we have physical servers, mm-hmm. meaning that mm-hmm. it's just the, no, uh, the, hard, the hardware running operating system. Right, right. Right. And, and of course, on top of that, install the applications. Mm-hmm. But that model had some problems, which if that hardware failed, then your entire application and access to that application also failed. Right. There was no right, right. failover. Yeah, because and, that's the only one. Yeah, because yeah. that's the only one. Mm-hmm. Then... The, then, then we went to where you had two servers mm. or more than one server right. running your application and they were kind of sharing the data. Right. And that is when we get I got into what we call um, the whole sharing of storage mm-hmm. and uh, what we call storage era networks and storage nodes came about. Right. Right, San. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so therefore, how do you now connect servers, connect them to an infrastructure, right. which then connects to storage? Mm. So right. you have the storage area networking, then you have what we call just a bunch of disk mm. in an right, right, right. enclosement, right. which we the whole the whole of that storage infrastructure plus those damn J bots, just a bunch of this. Right. <laughs> um, we we call that the SAN. So mm. we have server and we have SAN. Right. Now with that, you could now you could now share data across the servers. Mm-hmm. But we needed a way in which not only you could share the data, but you could also get to the point where applications themselves could just move across, seamlessly move across right. the stuff. And that's when we came to hypervisor. Mm, and okay. creating a hypervisor which allows you know migration of workloads across the nodes right, using right. a shared storage. Mm-hmm. So Servanza. Got you. So that's okay. where we started. Right. Um, now, as you as you went along, um, it, it definitely solved a lot of problems, mm-hmm. but it also created a few. Got you. Some of the some of the problems that it actually created were upgrades. You had to upgrade the the actual servers themselves right. separately. Right, right. Then you had to upgrade the the network, the storage network separately. Uh-huh. Then you had to upgrade the actual um the, 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 the storage, the, the storage, storage right. and the controllers within that the storage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and if you did any of that incorrectly, you had downtime. Ooh, right. And not only that, but in order for you to upgrade that, you had to have what we call a maintenance window. Uh, so you shut down and tell everybody. Uh, yeah, I tell everybody that to hear what this upgrade weekend or right, upgrade right, whatever right. it is. And right. if anything went wrong, then you are not up from Monday morning. Mm. And mm-hmm. so you know, so operationally, you had to spend the nights and your weekends upgrading that infrastructure. Right. And and upgrades actually come out, you know, pretty frequently. Right. right. I would say right. major right. upgrades is once a quarter. Right. So how do you do that once a quarter? And sometimes those upgrades take days. Mm. Not just a day, mm-hmm. days. So you'll be down for that, that, the that, let, that, that length of time. So right. that's why you do it over a weekend and mm. hopefully over you're you start at Friday morning. night and hopefully by Monday morning, you're good. Right, right. But most of the times it doesn't work out mm. that well. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. next thing is that to install that infrastructure when you're just implementing it, takes sometimes two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Mm. Some people ended up with, with months right. just to install and implement it properly. Right, right. Um, the other piece now is just operationally. Mm. What is required is that you had to have a storage administrator. 
because you're managing what, what right. you, you have to manage the actual storage itself mm -hmm. then each each storage um uh, what we call a storage solution right. had what we call two controllers a and mm -hmm. b mm -hmm. and and uh, the 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 actual what we call input outputs or the right. actual performance of your applications were shared across those two right. controllers right. and those controllers had a limitation they mm -hmm. had a certain amount of performance built in because they're actually you know processors right, right, right. running or are, 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 you know running running something like windows xp right they are storage controllers right right right, right? and what would happen there is that whenever you install or put more applications on those servers that are at the top, mm -hmm. then they would start to share the performance of their underlying uh, network and all storage. Of them are all of them those. are coming in. So therefore, right. suppose you had, um, say, 100 IOPS or 100 units of performance. Mm -hmm. Let's use that. Mm -hmm. And you had two applications. They could each get 50 units of performance. Right. But if you install two more applications, now they only have access to 25 units of performance right, right, and, got you. And, and, and so on and right. so on and so on and right. so so therefore as as you started to to add more workloads customers saw that they had decreased performance right so like it was noticeable no that yeah so and, and not only that and then to manage the solution mm -hmm. you had you had to manage the hypervisor you had to manage the actual storage itself mm -hmm. separately you had to manage the storage area network that had a different management pane, right. and then the actual um, storage itself right. had its own um, storage solution and its own management pane. So right. you're talking about four panes of glass to manage one solution, solution one for the solution entire organization. For the entire organization. So, you know, I know, I know that this is where <laughs> you know you're bringing the 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 solution that yes. is now present that we're talking about here. So tell me how HCI type of converged infrastructure would come in and sort through all of that. Right. So so one of the other things that you had a problem with is failures. Mm. If something failed within that, right. it would it would sometimes cause downtime. Especially if you had if you had a single disk failure, right. then you had another, your RAID systems would just go bonkers right. and all of a sudden you're down. Right. Because you have you have lost the consistency in terms of your RAID configuration right, and all right. of a sudden you're done. So therefore it could not handle multiple failures. So once you had a single failure, you're gone. Right away it. you had to be running into the office and you say, here what? We need emergency, we need to get stuff in right, and right. so forth. So now we move to HCI. Hmm. When we when we speak to our customers about HCI, it's really about how do you operate like the public cloud? Right. Like right. Microsoft, um, Amazon mm -hmm. and Google are operating their data centers. If you notice do you ever concern yourself about them being down? Never. They're always. No. Do you? Like do you? Listen. And even if they're down, are they down for long? Mm. They're not. It's like a short, short, I, short. I don't even notice. You it. don't even <laughs> notice it because they have geographical redundancy. Right. They have redundancies within itself and so forth. They don't use server side. Mm. They use hyper converged infrastructure uh, methodology right. for implementation of their their infrastructure. Mm. So what we are doing, or, or what companies should be looking at, is bringing that type of technology right. to optimize their own internal operations right, and it's right. available. And we have been using that. And what is important is just how do we get to, to, to where we are operating like the public cloud? And that's what type of convergence is, meaning you have servers and those servers are, are actually connected via network. So you don't need a storage, a storage network anymore. You don't need that, just a bunch of disks that are external. All you need is the servers connected to a network and managed by intelligent software. So software is actually the magic. Got you. Not, the, not what not it the, used not, to be where it's a lot of hardware and it's hardware focused. Hardware right? focused. You have the software doing the work for you now. So what we call is a software defined data center. Right. So looking back at that, right? So, so this new way of approaching your architecture, mm -hmm. right? Software defined, you're looking at hyperconvergence, you are virtually always up, yes. right? Operating just like how you have these players in the public cloud, right? Let's dial it back to what we started with, which is, you know, looking at how government can, mm -hmm. you know, leverage. Because we've, we've implemented some pretty big solutions for, yeah. for government, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I mean, of course, you know, not going to call you, not going to put you on the spot and call <laughs> names, you know, but, um, but what are the benefits? Like, what mm -hmm. are some of the, the big, 
you know, benefits and, and pluses that we've seen from implementing that kind of solution, um, or that they've seen, sorry, mm-hmm. from implementing that kind of solution, as opposed to, you know, uh, uh, you know, their traditional or their previous systems. Yeah. So one of the biggest benefits is just um, the management overheads. Um, when you think about it, you used to have, um, you know, three different specializations, if not four. And with hyperconvergence, we can have what we call generalists instead of specialists. So therefore, if I'm a storage, if I, I was a storage specialist back in the day, I couldn't go and leave because, you know, uh, you I, 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 would, I need to be there. <laughs> if something went wrong, then whatever it is. But now, persons can be trained right across the board to, to do everything on, a, on an HCI right. um, system. The next thing is just upgrades. Upgrades used to take, as I said, days, maybe, maybe weeks. Um, now, we can have a situation where while you're running your production workload during the day, one click upgrades and it upgrades the entire system while you're operating. So therefore there's no downtime. All right. so there's no maintenance window. window, it's gone. The other thing now is um, if something fails, then it is what we call, um, it, is, it is fault tolerant and resilient. So therefore, if you're at home and you get a message and it's late and it says a disk has failed, you don't worry about it. It automatically recovers within the system and it continues to operate. It doesn't use RAID, so therefore it does not have the same issues that are RAID. RAID right, so have. that same problem we said earlier with if two of you RAID this fail, then mm-hmm. I mean the system is out yeah. and you have to go in and fix it. Yeah. Right. Depending on which level of RAID you're running. Yes. Right. Yeah. That that is not something that we face with um HCI as well. So there are multiple benefits. And uh, not only that, when it comes to just implementing um you know, workload redundancy, it runs all different types of workloads. So whether it be databases, whether it be your general applications or specialized applications, we can run that on HCI. Right. Well. Anything you can, any any kind of workload that you can think of, we so can or that you need to run for your operations specifically, you can, we, yes. can, we can do that. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about um, the kind of flexibility that you get, because because mm-hmm. so, we mentioned, you know, we mentioned a kind of um, resilience, mm-hmm. right? Um, that you get with not having to be bogged down with just hardware, and if there's a failure, mm-hmm. you know, you, you're completely down, right? If it is that I, you know, I, I, if it is that a storm is coming, right? Mm-hmm. We partner with we partner with uh, you know some big ATI players, mm-hmm. right? So if it is that a, let's say a disruption is coming, we know something is coming, mm-hmm. hurricane, for example, yes. right? Um, and we want to, we want to make sure that we're still up and running. We can still provide the services that we, mm-hmm. that, you know, the critical services that we know we need mm-hmm. to be running um, as a government entity. How do we, how does HCI fix that kind of problem? Because mm-hmm. that's a, that's a, I mean, I can imagine you mentioned just one, like, like having a server. Yeah, that report. goes into business continuity. Right. So therefore, you know, if you're operating from a single location, mm. if that single location goes down, then you're done. Mm. I mean, don't care what operate what you're operating. But what it what what hyperconvergence allows is that because it reduces power and cooling. So therefore, we had a customer that had, I think, six or seven racks of servers and SAN. Right. And in when I want uh, within their data center, when we're when we're finished in terms of implementing um, a hyperconverged solution using Nutanix for them, what we came down to was a single rack. The other rack was where they had their UPSs. That's ah. how efficient we are. Um, and so therefore, power and cooling efficiently reduce. So when you think about now, how do I create a DR site, which is small, compact, and, uh, and able to, to replicate my workloads to, then within a very small closet, you could actually put your, your DR solution in there, which is, which is another cluster, new times cluster, and you replicate to it. And therefore you shut down, whenever you have a storm, you shut down your offices, which may not have the requisite dual power and so forth, and you fire up your DR location, right. just in case there's a flood or any other issues at your office. That's so simple as that. Awesome. All right. So that is, I mean, I can, I can see the benefits of it, yeah. uh, but I mean, I'm at Info Exchange, but even being within, I know that that in itself, that kind of, the kind of resilience, the kind of flexibility, uh, the uptime that you yes. get from operating. Um, I hope that you guys have taken, you know, a lot of notes from this episode. Um, that is just one in the, this entire series, you know, and I hope that you guys stay tuned. 
right? So in for exchange, these conversations with the CIO will bring you new, um, more information, more deep insights on, you know, things that affect digital transformation, technology. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.